Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We just talked about Texas A&M and how they're kind of moving a little bit more in silence than they have in past years and I think it's the best thing for them, that's for sure. Um, but let's move on to recruiting here and let's break down some of the big time things that happened this weekend and it was an LSU show. They got two big time commitments that absolutely turned the uh, recruiting world on its head because Frankly, I didn't expect them to get either of them, so let's get into this and let's break down some of the commitments. We will get to LSU, but I do want to start with A&M, uh, the team that we just talked about. They picked up a huge commitment from Kelshawn Johnson, a very talented wide receiver that is just outright speed. 5'11", 161, a very talented kid and someone that Texas was really after. After they lost out on Decoria Moore to Oregon, it felt like Texas really turned up the heat on this recruitment among some other recruitments that are coming up here pretty soon. So a big time win for A&M to kind of fend them off and give their offense, you know, that Anaya Smith type energy uh, that you can just throw a ball deep and know he's going to be down there at some point or do a jet sweep and He's going to get gone really quickly. Um, but then let's move on to the team that won the weekend. The Oh, excuse me. The LSU Tigers. Uh, the LSU Tigers got a huge commitment from five-star cornerback DJ Pickett. Uh, this was back on Friday just after the show. So 6'4", 180, a very lengthy receiver, very good ball skills, someone that is very, very dangerous on the outside and is ranked number three cornerback in the entire country according to on or number one co uh, cornerback in the country, number three overall recruit in the country. So a very, very talented guy, a huge get for LSU. This is the third guy they've got at the number one spot in their position in this entire class. Bryce Underwood and Harlem Berry were the number one at quarterback and running back respectively. Now they just added the number one cornerback, and it feels like they're finally getting things rolling over there. Corey Raymond is known for elite recruiting, and that's exactly what he's doing. And it's really interesting because there were a lot of crystal balls going towards the Oregon Ducks, and LSU came in the ninth hour and stole them away. So it'll be really, really interesting to see what this kid can do, and he might just have to be a starter uh, year one with all of the questions in that back end of that defense. And then they got another huge one. Derek Meadows is a five-star wide receiver that has committed to LSU. Cortez Hankton, as you see in that picture, getting to work uh, on the recruiting trail. Another fantastic recruiter that LSU brought in this offseason, but another huge get. Uh, Notre Dame was someone that was heavily pushing for him, and Deuce Knight, the uh, future quarterback for Notre Dame, was pushing for him very aggressively. But at the end of the day, I think Notre Dame might just be a year away from really getting that wide receiver uh, recruiting where it needs to be. And I think the guy that can kind of open those doors is Jaden Greathouse. He came in as a freshman last year, played really good football for the time that, you know, for being a freshman, for being on the field, the amount he was, I think he played really good football. But let's say he takes a big step forward this year, especially with Riley Leonard throwing in passes and he can kind of get rolling. I think recruits will listen to that and they'll see that this is probably the place that I want to be. So I think this is one that Notre Dame really wanted, but it was going to be tough to beat out Cortez Hankton and LSU for a wide receiver right about now. So that's definitely one that didn't necessarily surprise me quite as much as the DJ Pickett one, but still a fantastic pickup for LSU. Ohio State got in on the party as they often do. Jarquez Carter is a very talented defensive lineman, 6'2", 280, so not necessarily the biggest guy in the world, but definitely a very, very talented guy on the interior of that defense. And if you're Larry Johnson, he's going to be able to get big-time recruits. As long as he is the uh, defensive line coach in Columbus, uh, Ohio, the Buckeyes are going to have dudes up front. I can promise you that. This guy is absolutely remarkable at recruiting, at development, at everything in between. So definitely someone that Ohio State just got to hold on to with both hands and never let go, if I'm being totally honest. Um, but let's move on to the team that maybe be uh, has been the biggest surprise over the last couple of weeks. The Baylor Bears are going to absolute work. I would have picture with him in Baylor gear, but couldn't find it because this one came out of the dark too, if I'm being totally honest. Michael Turner is a very talented four-star running back out of North uh, Rich Highland, or, or Richland Hot Hills, excuse me, North Richland Hills, Texas. A very, very talented kid. Had offers from SMU, Oklahoma State, Utah. So a very talented kid. Number five running back in this class, according to On3. So after Taz Williams committing to this program, they're just absolutely cooking over there. And Dave Aranda is one of those guys that is going into 2024 with not necessarily a ton of hype around his team, not necessarily a ton of love, but if he can get to five wins, I think he keeps his job. And if he can keep these guys committed, then things might just get really interesting over there in Waco. And it's been quite some time since we've seen Baylor be 
a big time team in that uh, Big 12, but we know they can be uh, based on the past. But let's move on to Clemson here and Bryce Davis, a huge pickup, four star edge, 6'4, 255, just exactly what you want from an edge rusher, someone that is really, really talented. Pick them over Georgia and Duke were the two other teams really vying for him. And this is kind of just business as usual for uh, the Tigers. They're going to get elite defensive linemen. They're going to get elite linebackers. They're they're going to do work, um, essentially, at those two positions. It's been the thing that has happened every single year since Dabo took over, and that's not changing anytime soon. I can almost promise you that. But let's move on to Tennessee. They picked up a big-time linebacker commit, Christian uh Gaz, a very talented player, 6'3", 225, out of Covington, Georgia, so a very talented guy, top 85 recruit uh, this year, and someone that definitely is uh, kind of adding to a really, really interesting thing that's happening at Tennessee, where obviously we knew they were going to be able to recruit offensively. When you have Josh Heupel and you have that offense, especially what they had in 2022, you're going to have the ability to recruit the skill positions on offense. What they've done on defense has been remarkable. They continue to add really, really high-level guys, and it's making it where Tennessee doesn't have to beat people 42-45 to or 52-45. to They have to beat people 24-21. to It doesn't necessarily always have to be pretty, and that's kind of the big next step, right? That's the big step for Tennessee and Josh Heupel to take where they can become a big-time SEC player if they continue to build out this defense. What's up, D-Money? How you doing? Um, Floyd B- uh, Bucard is someone I want to talk about because he is coming all the way from Montreal, Quebec, which is very, very interesting. A guy that is a little, I- I'm sure, is a little bit rough around the edges, definitely more of a project-type guy, but 6'4", 315, defensive lineman. You want that guy on your roster, and you'll figure out everything else later. I promise you that. He's a very, very talented guy, and always really cool when you see someone from outside the U.S. make that jump into college football and... Something tells me this might just be a real big-time player in a couple of years here. Uh, UGA just continues to do UGA things, bring in big-time offensive linemen. And Cortez Smith is just the most recent among them. A very talented guy that was got offers from absolutely everywhere, but Miami was really the big battle here. And again, business as usual. Stacey Searles has done absolutely incredible work on the trail since he's taken over for Matt Luke there. And He's going to continue doing that. That's not stopping anytime soon. I can almost promise you that. So a very talented guy and someone that definitely can help uh, UGA almost right away with both their uh, guards, Dylan Fairchild and Tate Ratledge, likely moving on after this year. But let's move on to Miami. They got a huge commit from Jabari Antoine, a very talented corner that they absolutely needed. After missing out on someone like DJ Pickett, you need to be able to fill that position somehow, and they filled it really, really well with this kid. A very talented guy and someone that I definitely think is going to make some noise pretty early on during his career because, frankly, that's probably the biggest hole for Miami as you move on to the next little bit is that back end of that defense. And if you can add those elite recruits more and more, then you're off running. So this is definitely a kid that could pop up the very first year when he's in Coral Gables and make some noise. And then finally, Vernell Brown uh, the third made his decision. He's committed to Florida, and that's something that I've talked about on here a little bit before. He had offers from Ohio State, Miami, Florida State, and he picked Florida. And I need people to understand that there is something uh, being sold in those doors that is different, that recruits are responding to, that they obviously see in that building. And I don't know. I'm not saying that Florida's going to tear people apart this year. I'm not saying they're going to go, you know, nine and three and make a playoff or anything crazy. But this is a program that is really working fairly well comparatively to what they're doing on the football field. So it's a really, really interesting thing to watch. And definitely getting a guy like this is going to be a huge boost to that. So maybe Billy Napier doesn't win a ton of games this year, but with the recruiting class he's bringing in, you might just want to keep him around. Um, so it'll be fascinating to watch that unfold. But then finally, I kind of want to get into the big time commitments that are coming up in August. We have tons of five stars that are committing this August, and I want to give some predictions for them. So let's get underway here. Uh, Jared Smith is a five star edge. He is committing on the 3rd of August. I'm going to go Auburn here. I feel pretty confident in that. It feels like everything is trending towards Auburn. South Carolina is going to make a push here late, but I'd lean towards Auburn winning this one out. And then Trey McNutt, a five-star safety, a very, very talented young kid, committing on the exact same day. I think this one's going to be Oregon. I think Ohio State wants this one really, really bad, um, especially after losing some other commitments to Oregon. But 
I just think it's going to be too much. I think uh, Oregon's going to win this one out. But if anyone was to steal this one, I think it would be Ohio State. You got Kalik Lockett is going to commit shortly after that on the 7th at 2.41 p.m. for some reason. I don't know why it's so specific, but I do think he's going to pick Texas. I know A&M's pushing really hard. I know Bama's pushing probably harder than anyone else, but I like to think Texas is going to get it done. Um, There's no two ways about that. And then You have Josh Petty, a very talented five-star offensive tackle. He's committing on the 12th. It's going to be Florida State. I feel very confident in that. Georgia Tech's the other team that's really pushing here, but you're fighting an uphill battle. I'll be totally honest. Uh, David Sanders Jr., the number one offensive tackle in the country, is committing shortly after that on the 17th. It's going to be Georgia. I feel pretty confident in that. I think Nebraska's going to push. I think Ohio State's the real threat, but... I think it's going to be Georgia at the end of the day. And then I think Texas finishes out with two big-time ones at the end of the month. On the 30th with Michael Fasusi, a five-star offensive tackle, and Jamie French, a five-star wide receiver. Very, very talented guys, and I think both of them are going to pick Texas. I know Fasusi is definitely uh, leaning a lot towards A&M and definitely is going to be a very tough one, a uh, tough battle down the stretch. But Texas holds a slight lead right now, and I feel confident that they will continue that slight lead as they move forward. So very much like uh, a lot of these players. And I think when you get into recruiting around this time of year, there's you can kind of take it with a grain of salt. You know, this is obviously a huge time of recruiting and one of those times that you absolutely need to execute. But there still is December. There still is time to kind of lock down some of these. So some are not so panic, panic. Some should be panicking a little bit more than they are. But at the end of the day, it is going to be crazy over the next couple of weeks with recruiting and it's not going to come to an end until signing day. That's for sure. And then it starts right back over again. That's the beauty of recruiting. But we'll take our last break here. And when we come back, we got contender hot takes for you. Kind of a new segment around here. We'll do the Big 12 today and kind of work our way through all the Power 4 conferences and just give a hot take for a lot of these teams. So we'll break that down right after this. So stick with us. <laughs> 